A very good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to the Sunday edition of Vogue's European Outlook. The US snow cover interestingly at 45.1% as of today and this is the highest for the date since records began um, for snow cover uh, since 2003. So very interesting actually to see the, um, the US snow cover for you know, we're nearly into the middle portion of March and uh, with 45%, so nearly half of the lower 48 is snow covered at this moment in time. Uh, I thought that was very interesting to show. Also, the year to date temperature across the lower 48 is in fact uh, below normal, uh, with exceptions of a couple of areas, including the southeastern half of the country. But uh, this is the period from the 1st of January right up until now and um, a fairly chilly start to the um, a very chilly first two and a half months of 2022 for the lower 48 uh, and in stark contrast that this is how Europe is looking very warm indeed and it's interesting to see what's going on with the the stratospheric warming that we're um, under going at the moment and I'll, I'll look at that in a bit more detail in just a second but it's going to be interesting to see whether we can start to turn this uh, this very warm anomaly around as we go uh, through the second half of March and into April and you know you know later down the road May, June, July, August it'll be interesting to see how the overall summer uh, goes with regards to temperature anomaly but uh, We've got uh, plenty to look at. There's no doubt about that, and um, you know we're we're seeing um, very snowy scenes out of uh, Turkey. <clears throat> this is a tweet that um, David uh, Birch um, kindly shared with um, with the Twitter world uh, of the heavy uh, Black Sea effect snowfall in parts of Turkey. Midwinter cold and very snowy uh, conditions for areas many areas of, of turkey including the capital istanbul as well and um you know it's it's just been a very very cold first half to um to march down in the uh, southern southern and southeastern portion of the continent and um, there's no question about that this is a, a fantastic photograph here of uh, downtown Istanbul with a uh, snow cover so where are we at where it's going to be very interesting to see exactly how uh, the next wee while pans out these are the uh, 10 millibar temperature and um, this is the 10 millibar temperature profile here at the moment across the top of the hemisphere so we've seen stratospheric warming, we've seen the ease, and now we're starting to see the return of a, a more pronounced uh, warming within the stratosphere. So that was the current um, uh, picture here. Let's have a look at uh, 10 days from now. And bear in mind, this is in the upper portion of the stratosphere. Look at that here, there. You can see the renewed pulse of warming now starting to extend from, uh, from Siberia towards the pole uh, so that's five days from now and you can see here what takes place at 192 hours which is um that is about 10 days and look at the warming that we're now starting to see taking shape extending from siberia over top of the pole and uh, that is a very pronounced warming indeed now of course you get the demise of the uh, of the polar vortex uh, during the springtime, it uh, happens every year. It's a natural um, phenomenon. But uh, the warming that we're seeing at the moment is pronounced. It's early and it's coming off what has been a very strong and cold polar vortex. And this uh, abrupt flip, this rise of about 30 to 40 degrees Celsius within the stratosphere, within just a matter of days, could have... Uh, significant downstream effects on the weather now of course we do need to get the propagation of energy from the stratosphere down and towards the troposphere and um, you know nothing is a, a given nothing is a certainty but quite often folks when you get these warm winters 
and you get this type of um, situation developing within the stratosphere um, earlier than scheduled, nature has a way of bringing what was once a warm winter, you know, followed by a cold spring. And, uh, you know, we've had a cold first half, first 10 days of March across uh, Western Europe, including the British Isles. We're seeing the temperature recovering now with milder conditions, uh, you know, moving in off the Atlantic. But there is strong indications of the blocking high pressure within the mid to high latitude um, region. And, uh, you know, with a strengthening um, Scandinavian blocking high, the possibility of easterly winds coming in during the second half of the upcoming work week, there is good reason to believe that we are going to start to see colder conditions moving back in. Now, of course, you have to factor in the strengthening March sunshine. You know, it's it's of a strength now uh, comparable to the end of September. Uh, there is uh, so many different things to throw into the, the equation, but uh, you could potentially be looking at uh, cold easterly winds, cold high pressure, chilly days, cold nights, heavy frosts, possible snow, uh, with uh, very cold air coming in off the continent. The modelling is seeing cold air returning after it relaxes over Ukraine, Bulgaria, Romania, Moldova, this region. We see the, the return of very cold air with uh, high pressure strengthening to the north. And there is some pretty good model agreement now. It's not just the GFS, it's not just outliers that are now starting to suggest and I showed you this in the video yesterday of that block of cold air, that core of cold developing and then getting uh, transported, uh, you know, east to west underneath that strong block uh, of Scandinavian high pressure. But this here, folks, kind of almost reinforces the, the long term idea that I've had. I believe that March would be a colder month than what we've seen back in, in January and particularly so February we would see at or below average temperatures during the month of March and a colder than normal April. And uh, this certainly is indicating the possibility of, of a colder April, possibly even a colder May. And um, that would certainly go well. After a, a very, very disappointing, very poor forecast during the month of uh, you know uh, December, January and February, Hopefully I can redeem myself somewhat by putting out a forecast for a cool spring and it materialising here. So let's have a look at the, uh, this is off the, the, the weatherbill.com. You can see here, this is the CFSV2 daily chart. And this is representative of mean sea level pressure anomalies. So above or below normal pressure at sea level. And it's interesting how over the next 30 day period, and this is uh, the period between uh, the 13th of March, which of course is today, through to the to the 12th of April. And you can see very clearly the positive over Scandinavia and extending towards Greenland and a negative uh, down near the Azores. And this is near enough an opposite of what we've seen during the month of February in particular. Very strong polar vortex. We had a very, uh, very, very positive Arctic oscillation and North Atlantic oscillation was positive as well. And uh, But this is a flip around taking place. And I think this is a byproduct of both the Madden Julian oscillation and the stratospheric warming that's taking place. And of course, you have the lag effect of that sudden stratospheric warming. But this is a very interesting uh, output from the CFS V2 with regards to the next 30 days and the mean uh, sea level pressure here. And let's have a look at the, the temperature profile here uh, over the course of uh, the five day increments here. So this is the upcoming uh, period here. Uh, let me just get back to the current picture and uh, you know it's interesting to see how warm um, the Arctic is at the moment here it is also interesting to see how warm the lower 40 is uh, according to these charts so this is the period between Monday the 14th and Saturday the 19th of 
of March here. And you can see here what we're looking at here. And you can see how the, the pattern starts to turn around here. Now we start to see uh, the colder conditions starting to take shape over uh, the United States. So that the cold here uh, over the central and eastern half of the country here. This is the period between the uh, Saturday the 26th and Thursday the 31st of March. We've also got a cold UK, Spain, France. I know it's quite difficult to see. It's quite small looking and I do apologize for that. But as we play through the loop, you can see how the cold strengthens both over uh, much of the lower 48 of the United States, but also look at the UK here. We've got the purples, the greens uh, representing colder than normal. And this is the period 29th through the 3rd of April. We continue to play through the loop. Look at how cold the uh, lower 48 is, central and eastern in particular. Also notice here the UK, notice Europe as well, turning very, very cold indeed. This, folks, I believe is the, the byproduct and the effect of the ongoing stratospheric warming. Now, we've seen a warming taking place so far. Then we've seen a pullback in that warming. But we're seeing a renewed, even stronger surge of warming now and through the next week to 10 days. And that is uh, possibly key to the cold April. Now, the cold that we see between, you know, say towards the, the, the second half of March is, I believe, a, a, a byproduct, a mixture between the Manjulian oscillation and the stratospheric warming. But the second wave of warming, I think, will reinforce the, the cold theme in the April. And even as we go through the period here, this is the 9th through the 14th, we're still holding on to colder than normal across almost all of Europe and a good swathe of the lower 48 as well. And the Arctic Oscillation is expected to go towards uh, negative here, as you can see. Let's hone in on Europe and we'll have a better, closer look at what the model is showing here. And uh, you can see, of course, the upcoming a five-day period here uh, rather warm across particularly the northern half of Europe here but uh, as I play through the sequence here you can see how the cold it uh, just comes and then holds it's very very interesting to see the turnaround in the, the modeling here this takes out by the way to the middle portion of April here and much of Europe is colder than normal here and of course when you look at the year to date uh, warmth it's going to be interesting to see if we can start to turn that uh, anomaly on its head as we go forward here this is the ecmwf and uh, it's also very interesting this is the ensemble by the way so this is uh, all members it is not just one individual run and you can see as i play through the loop same idea as the cfsv2 strengthening of high pressure over scandinavia keeping things warm than normal keeping our eyes very closely on that cold over the southeast of Europe. Notice how it rides underneath that area of high pressure over Scandinavia, and we start to see uh, colder times to come towards the end of the month and in through the first half of April here. So I think overall it's looking pretty good with regards to the overall forecast as we go forward here. And like I did with the winter season, if if this doesn't materialize then you know it adds to the questions that i've already got with regards to the, the, the winter uh, over all year so very interesting i think it's going to be a disappointing spring if you're looking for warmth i think uh, overall but uh, i think it's going to be a, a very uh, very chilly uh, it has a great potential at least to be a very very chilly april and even possibly may as well here so that's it for today thanks for watching i do appreciate it please like share and subscribe and of course remember to hit the bell for the latest notifications of each upload have a great evening bye for now